Are we ready, girls? Well, I am. Me too. Well, where's Taylor? I'm sure she'll be here soon. Maybe we should start without her. We have a lot to get done today. You were actually going to start without me. Well, now we won't have to. You're here. Let's get started, okay? Hi, I'm Hannah. And I'm Angie. And me, I'm Taylor. Well? Well what, girls? Well, aren't you going to introduce yourself? Oh, right. I'm Nicole, and I'm the narrator. Now let's get started. Did you know that in the United States, there are roughly 54 million children and adults with disabilities? I think you'd agree, that's a lot of people. This means that there's a good chance you may have a family member with a disability, have a friend with a disability, or that you may meet someone with a disability today or tomorrow. That's why it's important to realize that people with disabilities are no different than you or I. From young kids to students and adults, everyone can learn how to meet and treat others. That's right. Getting to know those around us, it's not that difficult. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. See, nothing to it. That's right. Now, shall we get to the tips? Oh yeah, the tips. There are 10 to be exact. 10 tips on getting to know people with a disability. Well said, Taylor, but we prepared some drawings so that we don't forget the tips. And just to make it even more fun, we put all three of you in the sketches. Now who's ready to get us started? I am tip number one. If you're speaking to someone who uses a sign language interpreter, speak to the person who's deaf, not to the person who is interpreting. In our drawing, Taylor is looking at Amy while she asks her a question and continues to look at Amy while Nancy interprets Amy's answer. That's not hard at all. I can do that. Should we move on to number two? It's my turn, you know. Go ahead, make it happen. Number two. If you meet someone who has an artificial limb or can only move their hands a little bit, offer to shake their hand. If they offer their left hand, that's totally acceptable. In the drawing, Hannah is meeting her friend's father who has an artificial arm. Hannah not only smiles at John when she greets him, she also looks directly at him and offers her hand. John smiles back and offers his left hand. Right to left, left to left, it really doesn't matter. As long as we connect with others. I'm next, can I go? Go for it. Tip number three. If you meet someone who can't see well or can't see at all, make sure you let them know who you're speaking to when you're in a group of people. In this drawing, we see a group of kids in a restaurant. Jim is blind. Angie asks him a question. She makes sure she uses his first name in the question. Also, if your friend is not able to see, offer to tell them what is on their plate as well as where it is. Using their first name is easy. Watch. Hey Taylor, what are you doing tonight? I haven't decided yet, Angie. Hannah, what's your favorite subject? Recess. <laughs> Nicole? Yes, Hannah? Who's next? Angie's next. That's right, here I go. Tip number four. If you want to help someone, ask them first. If they want you to help them, make sure you listen to their instructions carefully. For example, in our diagram, we see Robert who uses a wheelchair moving toward a door. Taylor sees him and asks if she can help. Robert doesn't see any automatic door openers and gladly accepts Taylor's help. Here, Robert tells Taylor to hold the door open from the inside so that he has enough room to move through the door. Taylor does exactly what Robert asks. Let me try. Can I help you with anything? Why, no, thank you. I'm doing perfectly fine, but thanks for asking. You're very welcome. Girls. Yes. yes. Let's move on. Taylor, I believe you're next. Cool. Tip. Number five. Treat people with disabilities the same way you treat people of the same age. In this sketch, Angie is introducing Jordan, who uses a wheelchair, to her friend Nick. Nick pats Jordan's head and says, well, hello, little Jordan, even though they're the same age and size. He responds by saying, just call me Jordan and shake my hand. I feel like a puppy when you pat me on the head. I don't want to call little Hannah either or Tiny Taylor, and let's not forget babies and toddlers. Absolutely. It's important to treat all kids the same, including the real little ones. All right then, let's move on. Who's next? That would be me, tip number six. Don't hang or lean on someone's wheelchair. Generally, people who use wheelchairs think of their chairs as their space. People who use guide dogs feel the same way. Don't distract their dog without permission. 
This drawing shows how you might feel if someone leaned on your chair during lunch hour. You would probably feel crowded and uncomfortable. In this sketch, we see Tanya, who is blind, walking down this busy street. Her guide dog is assisting her. Hannah greets Tanya and asks if she may pet her dog. Looks like a nice puppy. Angie, I believe you are next. Tip number seven. When talking to someone that is not able to speak easily, listen very well and make sure to wait until they finish. In our illustration, we see Angie listening closely to Mike and waiting patiently for him to finish. However, she didn't understand everything Mike said. Angie repeats what she did understand so that Mike doesn't have to repeat the whole answer. It also helps to ask questions that allow the person to respond with a short answer. For example, instead of Angie asking Mike something like, so tell me about yourself, Angie asks questions like, how old are you? Or, do you like to play games? That's a cinch. Are you happy? Yes, are you cold? No, are you dating? Are you just about done? No. Yes. We still have three more to go. Ah, yes, three more to go. Who's next? Me, but I need help. Hannah? Tip number eight. If you are talking to someone who uses a wheelchair or crutches, try to bend to their level so they can see you better. In this sketch, Hannah is not able to walk well without the help of crutches. Hunter has been talking to Hannah for a while and she's getting tired of looking up at such a sharp angle. Here, Hunter realizes his mistake and sits down on the desk so that both he and Hannah are able to look into each other's eyes easily. You're right, this will not be comfortable. Tell me about it. Okay, I'm next. Whenever you're ready, Hannah. Tip number nine. There are several things to keep in mind when talking to someone with a hearing disability. Make sure you have their attention. In this picture, Taylor is tapping Henry on the shoulder to get his attention. You may also wave. Look directly at them and speak clearly, slowly, and with normal expression. Doing this may help you find out if they read lips. If the person does read lips, try to make sure your face is in the light so they can see you. Also, keep your hands, food, and any other items away from your mouth. Here we see Taylor motioning to her friend to pull his hand away from his mouth so that Henry can understand him better. Don't think a person can hear you well or is able to tell who is talking just because they're wearing a hearing aid. And finally, don't shout at the person. Speak in your normal tone of voice. For instance, in this drawing, Taylor is introducing her niece, Cammie, to Matt in a normal tone. Matt notices Cammie's hearing aid and shouts his greeting, even though shouting is not necessary. Cool it, Matt. Okay, I think that just about covers it. Oh wait, there's one more. Last but not least, tip number 10. Relax, take it easy. It's okay to say everyday common expressions like, See you later. To someone who is blind or, Did you hear about Cynthia? To someone who is deaf or even, Let's go for a walk. To someone who uses a wheelchair. Just be natural. I think we can all agree that if we live by these simple tips, when we are getting to know people of all ages, including babies with disabilities, things will turn out just fine. Does anyone have any last words before we go? Not me. I think we said it all. I agree. Me too. All right. Then say your goodbyes. Bye. Bye.